Okay, so you've heard the advice, play tons of slow chess. It's going to help you to evaluate, calculate, defend your material, look for tactics. All of that is true. However, there is a more subtle reason why you should play something like 15 minutes rapid with a 10 second increment over a flat 10 minute game, which is something I only realized recently, which is that you are going to encounter lots of blitzers. Is a term I made up. And as people who can't be bothered to use their time, they just make moves really quickly. They want to take their dog for a walk, looking for some cheap rating points, feel good for the day. However, in doing so, they get into inferior positions and often throw away the game. And so in this video, I'm going to show you four of my recent games in the span of about 10 games where my opponent didn't need to play so fast, but they just did and they threw away the game. Okay, so in this first example, I'm going to show you the game that took me to 1600 chess.com rapid, a feat that I achieved within three years of playing chess. Not bad for a guy with two little girls. And so the details of this game are not important. What's important here is that my opponent has the white pieces. We have a king and pawn endgame. I'm up two extra pawns and my opponent resigns. If you have a look at the clock time here, we're deep into an end game and my opponent has 15 minutes, 58 seconds on the clock. I have eight minutes, 22 seconds, basically used up half my time. My opponent has more time than when they started after so many moves of chess. And I won't go through all the details of this game, but have a look at what's going on at the critical moments of this game. So in this position, my opponent plays this move. Knight takes F5, threatening the bishop here on E7. We have queen to C7. And launching a double attack here on this e5 pawn but also defending the bishop my opponent plays this move queen to d2 we have knight takes e5 i just think that's a clean pawn we have knight takes e7 queen takes e7 and in this position my opponent has 15 minutes seven seconds on the clock and their time goes up actually when they play this move queen to f4 they just play it immediately it's a blunder and so if you're not looking at the lines here on your screen you might want to pause the video and work out the winning way here there are a couple uh, well done if you did okay so the the winning move in this position uh, is to just capture here on f3 okay so i think bishop takes f3 is better but i played this move knight takes f3 it looked a bit more human and now after bishop takes f3 obviously queen e1 is checkmate and they're not going to take back with their queen because they are going to lose it and so they have to take back with the g pawn and so in this position we have g takes f3 queen takes e2 my opponent goes to get back their bishop so they have this check here on b8 the king shuffles up they grab the bishop but they're just completely lost here the white king is exposed i grab this pawn on d3 and again you can see here they are losing but they can fight on it's a queen versus queen end game you can create complications there's always a threat of a perpetual my opponent can't be bothered they play this move queen to e4 and i don't even think about this it can't be the case that white is winning in this position so I just capture their queen on e4, shuffle my king into the center, and a few moves, they resign. Okay, so in this second example, we have another person here who loves to take their dog for a walk. And here they've been checkmated. They have the white pieces. Look at their clock time, 16 minutes, 45 seconds, more than the 15 minutes allocated. So they're just blitzing out moves. And again, the details of this game are not important. However, at the critical moments, my opponent is not bothered to calculate. And so if we go back, to when it was in this position we have rook takes b8 rook takes b8 queen takes c5 queen takes a4 and in this position you just have to calculate the threats okay white is down a pawn it's not the end of the world it's lower rated chess you can fight on create complications and the threat here i'm sure you notice you do your tactics puzzle the whole time is queen to d1 check this knight on f6 is controlling here this g4 square there's ideas of rook b1 and there's all kinds of back rank mating ideas here. So you have to be very, very careful. My opponent just needs to go back. Needs to protect against this check. Needs to do something about the bank rank here. However, they can't be bothered. They play this move queen to c7. Okay, we play queen d1 check. They block with the knight. Rook b1, very instinctive. Threatening to take the knight and deliver, obviously, checkmate. My opponent just can't be bothered. Queen to c8 check the king shuffles up queen f5 check g6 and you cannot take this knight and it's exactly what my opponent does can't be bothered we take the knight here on f1 the king moves up and of course queen h1 is checkmate but just another example where you didn't need to do this you can fight on but my opponent can't be bothered okay so in this game i'm playing albert einstein who said he's dead he's alive and well and this is just an example of a player who can't be bothered to calculate in the opening and you might get away with this in a 10 minute rapid game fight on limp on flag however in a 15 minute game if you just blunder in the first few moves 
your opponent has ample time to try and calculate and convert the game. And so we have B3 from me, the greatest opening of all time. Putting the pawn in the center now is totally 1990s, guys. Do the Nimzo Larson following Adaban Baskaran's lifetime repertoire course. We have D5 here, Bishop B2. And now Bishop to F5. Maybe one of these London system lovers. They just want to play it with the black pieces as well. And here, the idea in Baskaran's course is to play D3 knight to d2 and e4 and try to bully this bishop and so my opponent plays after d3 he plays this move e6 okay and now their bishop is outside this pawn chain so it's liable to attack we have knight to d2 and in this position it should be clear that what i want to do is play e4 get to put a pawn in center takes takes the bishop's got to go and convert however my opponent look at the clock time here 15 minutes on the clock they just blitz out this move bishop to e7 and they lost Completely losing. You know how to win this game. Simple, easy peasy. Not paying attention to simple threats, simple captures. We have bishop takes g7, winning the game. Bishop to f6 is a try. Basically saying, if you take my rook, I'll take your rook. But after that, you're just going to take their bishop, so you're up a clean piece. So like, go ahead. We take the rook, and they realize this. So the best thing to do is actually just to go down the exchange, not a full piece. And so they play bishop takes h8. Okay, we move our rook out of the way. And the game gets a little bit complicated because they put this bishop here on c3. But remember, I have here now 15 minutes on the clock. I can calculate my way out of this. And it's a game that I go on to convert. Okay, so in this fourth and final amusing example, we have here a joker with early queen moves. So once in a blue moon, I come across these people. Nowadays, not so much. Now I'm no longer a low-rated player. But you do come across them sometimes. And here... If we go back to when the game started, excuse me, we have e4, b6, bishop c4, a little bit inaccurate. Maybe you should be playing d4 here, take over the center. This bishop also probably belongs on d3 later, where it can control the e4 pawn. However, it's fine, it's not losing. We have bishop b7, queen h5. Guy thinks I was born yesterday, I'm going to play knight f6 and hang mate. Obviously, we're not going to do that. We have e6, throwing, stopping mate here. We have d3, knight f6. Developing with tempo, the queen's got to move. Queen f3, another nice thing about playing bishop to b7 is that these early queen movers often put their queen on f3. And now it's just in x-ray. This pawn here on e4 is pinned. And in this position, we have knight to c6. We have a dual threat here. We have knight to d4. Attacking the queen, c2 square. But also, an interesting thing here is that there's no e5 pawn. And so we can also fork the material. They don't realize this, so they play this move c3. Now we have knight to e5 and this effectively results in them blundering a pawn the queen's obviously got to move we have knight takes e4 d takes e4 and now bishop takes e4 winning a clean pawn and have a look at this position it is about 15 minutes 56 seconds on the clock my opponent has okay for me it's easy to come up with the moves here however my opponent could calculate could try to find stubborn moves here could fight on they're down a pawn it's not the end of the world at this level of chess have a look at this just immediately playing this move bishop to g5 their actual clock time goes up now to 16 minutes and they can't be bothered and in this position their idea is clear they want to take the knight remove the defender tactic take the bishop doesn't work because they're not paying attention to the threat here on g2 and okay they tried to take the the knight but we can just capture the rook later we recapture here on f6 and a few moves later my opponent resigns so there you go guys something that i've only noticed recently hopefully you enjoyed that video online chess lends itself to playing fast it's obviously associated with bullet blitz fast rapid however there is a tendency for players to take that culture of moving quickly into their slow online games and they just throw it all away